Hey, I'm Jessica Lyons, Cybersecurity Editor at The Register. And today I am speaking with Microsoft's Ram Shakur Siva Kumar, and he is a data cowboy with the Microsoft AA Red Team, quite possibly the coolest title ever. So Ram, you started Microsoft's AI Red Team, and was that a hard sell initially? Yeah, uh, this is a great question. I wish, you know, looking back, there's like a very linear story, like, hey, we started this, and now look where we are. Uh, but when I started the AI Red Team in um, 2019, um, I was first of all burned out. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of break, going to come back and refresh. And when I came back, I made a pitch to uh, my leadership at that point. I'm like, hey, I really want to go back to the roots of like trying to think about attacking AI systems. And they were really supportive. They're like, hey, go try this out. And when I went and spoke to like different teams, like, hey, I want to go and red team AI systems, you know, the canonical answer that I joke is like, go away. Um, <laughs> but then like, you know, when we showed, hey, here's like a direct through line of how an adversary can compromise like your AI system, the penny immediately dropped. It went from this, you know, arcane academic research to how adversaries can take advantage of AI systems and and compromise it in different perspectives. There was no question like this was something that we should be investing in. And this was long before, you know, um, the current like AI craze. This was like in 2019, they were like, yeah, this is something that you should go and tackle. But then like even the formulation of how we thought about AI Red Team Jessica was not was also like morphing. So in 2019, I would say that was my era, to use a Taylor Swift term, was very security focused. Like, you know, hey, what are the security failures that we can kind of think of? And then, you know, we were like, okay, you know, we make all these like responsible AI commitments. So we should also like think about responsible AI red teaming around like circa 2020-ish. Um, and then we were chugging along and we were like making this progress. And then when GPT-4 dropped, everything changed. You know, um, we released a toolkit and back in 2021 called Counterfeit. We were like, hey, we are benefiting from all this uh, tooling that we're building, maybe other red teams. You know, it's like, it was like putting a message in a bottle and throwing it out and saying, maybe you will also benefit from Counterfeit. But when 2022, like um, when we got access to GPT-4, we just realized the process and tooling that we had was not really how this new paradigm of ML models kind of were formulated. So it was almost like going back to class again, going back to university again. We're like, okay, how do we rescale and how do we kind of reprocess for this newer paradigm? So I'd always like to think of the canonical redemption arc for the AI Red Team. We started. Um, and we were like so ahead uh, of like the red teams. And then as the world kind of moved, we also had to kind of like expand how we think about failures and retool and reprocess and come in like different eras all the time, Jessica. And like you said, so you start with this the kind of the more traditional security red team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also all of these very specific AI concerns when it comes yeah. to red teaming. So talk about some of those. What are some of the things that you need to really focus on when you're doing AI red teaming as opposed to the more traditional security red team? Absolutely. So the first thing, the common misconception is like, hey, AI red team kind of replaces all like traditional red teaming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not the case. So um, think of AI red teaming as something that is complements and I'll give you a very concrete example. Um, we routinely uh, collaborate with other red teams within Microsoft, and they are kind of the infrastructure experts. Like nobody knows about Azure security more than, you know, the Azure security red team, or nobody knows more concretely about the internals of how Windows works than the Windows red team. So the way we collaborate with is, hey, we bring the model sort of like knowledge of how these model failures happen, but we cannot overestimate how at the end of the day, AI is just, you know, bits and bytes. It's not math and magic. So we really want to marry how we think about traditional security 
and place it alongside these newer uh, paradigm of failures. And what about things like trustworthiness, like biases? Do those yeah. play into AI red teaming? Yeah, and this is a fantastic question because when we think about these sort of failures, right? Um, we it's it's very counterproductive to think of them as hey, we think about like security failures or we think about responsible AI failures. And one thing we have found useful within Microsoft is they're actually two sides of the same coin. Um, we want to think about when we are doing an operation, you don't want a separate operation for, hey, how can the training data be exfiltrated? How can the model weights be exfiltrated? Or how can an adversary, you know, poison the data set? So those could be like security goals. But if you have a completely separate response way at goals, like, hey, can this system generate violent content? Can the system generate content that promotes self-harm? If you have two separate teams doing that, um, you're only getting like two half of the pictures. It's a canonical, like, you know, I touch the elephant in different parts sort of uh, framing. So what we have found useful is thinking of traditional red traditional security failures and combining them with responsible AI failures and looking them at one through line. Um, the common example that I have in my mind is jailbreaks. You know, jailbreaks is kind of like a technique that could be weaponized for, you know, a very like, full, you know, like facetious harm, like, hey, how can I, you know, talk like a pirate mm -hmm. to like, you know, generating something that is pretty offensive to essentially aid in uh, promoting like a spear fishing goal. So that same technique can be repurposed for multiple harm categories. And that is by having this AI red team kind of quarterback okay, this is a technique, let us like work with the traditional like red team, let us work with the, you know, the Azure red team experts, let's work with the Windows red team experts, but also let's work with the MSR Fairness Center, mm -hmm. who would like live and breathe bias like since like 2016, if not earlier. So we look at this as a partnership across the different expertise groups um, and, and, and following from there, Jessica. So, so when we were talking about this, that RSA, we talked about these different personas that you and your team take on when you're red teaming. Um, yeah. And I, I believe there were four of those. Is that right? Yeah. We uh, All good things come in three. So there are oh, three. three. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so tell me again about those, those three personas and what each of them would be trying to break. Absolutely. So whenever we do an operation, we like to assume these sort of Different personas is how we can land uh, these sort of risks identification. I mean, the first question we try to ask is, what can an existing adversary who knows nothing about machine learning, you know, think of the traditional, um, you know, software adversaries, what can they do to cause failures in machine learning system? It's going to be the first one. Uh, the second one is like an adversary who knows a little bit more about machine learning. So, you know, they may have the compute power or they may, you know, have um, adversarial researchers. We just want to like prepare for a future where adversaries are also being very intelligent and understand the nuances of machine learning. So that's going to be a second sort of category. Uh, what can they do? How can they weaponize? How can they misuse? Um, and the third sort of category we joke is a teenager with a potty mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. And because sometimes all it takes is for a very creative person to cause these like machine learning systems to fail. And we want to be able to find those failures before it reaches the hands of the customers. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way we can think about, you know, measuring how prevalent that risk is, you know, thinking about mitigating it, having a robust, um, you know, a response process for that. So we think about this in three personas. We think about this in the context of a traditional adversary, an adversary who can, who's a little bit more recent in the context of uh, machine learning, and this canonical teenager with a potty mouth. And tell me, so I'm assuming maybe the first one is kind of the more talk like a pirate example, um, but tell me what each of these three might, might want to do specifically. How would they try to yeah. cause Absolutely. So for me, like um, the, the the traditional adversary is going to be thinking about, hey, what are like I said, machine learning at the end of the day comes to software. What are some mm -hmm. like software vulnerabilities that these AI systems have? And um, you know, if you are not actively thinking about this as in a software framework, and if you're not actively patching for that, 
guess what? An adversary can just reuse their traditional, you know, toolkits, exploit those vulnerabilities in that software, and then cause AI systems to fail. The second, so that would be like in the first persona. This, in mm-hmm. the second persona uh, style setting, um, you know, we want to think about, okay, if an adversary is pretty thinking about this in a very uh, nuanced fashion, they kind of understand that, hey, this machine learning system is vulnerable to, say, adversarial examples. Can I repurpose, like, uh, this PhD-style attack on this AI system and see if it can, if it, if it, if it fails? So that would be the adversarial examples, the poisoning style attacks is what I put in the second bucket. In the third bucket, like you said, would be like talk like a pirate or, you know, let's use a jailbreak and get and have it generate like salacious information. Um, again, I never want to discount the third category. People will be like, well, they're low skilled folks. What can they do? Our point of view is low skill doesn't mean low impact. We want to be actively trying to uh, probe for all three sorts of failures so that we can get a holistic picture. And the the way we kind of think about this is also a little bit different, Jessica. Um, the For instance, we have, we realized very early on in the game, like in 2022, like when we were red teaming these large language models that especially when it comes to jailbreaks, it's like social engineering. You know, you social engineer like people to give their credit card information or get their passwords over phone. So we were like, you know what? We need to think outside the box. So we, in our staff, we have an amazing social engineer. She's won like a black badge in DEF CON, which is like the the, the pinnacle, you know, of like uh, getting kudos. So we have her kind of like trying to reuse those techniques and try to get like illicit private information from LLMs. Uh, we have folks in our staff who, uh, who have a background in neuroscience, uh, background in bioweapons. We have somebody who is an uh, Air Force veteran. Uh, so it's because the, the three categories are so different. Um, and if we only were to think about this in the context of traditional red teaming, we're gonna really miss out on these novel failures. And that is why thinking about this holistically just means thinking outside the box and and trying to switch in these diverse perspectives. Right. And so your job and your team job your, is thinking about it holistically and all of the potential ways that adversaries could attack these models. But I'm curious, what are you actually seeing in real life when it comes to attacks? Yeah, um, and this is a great question. You know, one thing, I, I always like to tell people is the is the goal of the AI Red Team is to really push the boundaries on what's possible. So, um, you know, one question we always get asked is like, hey, but some, some things you're doing has not manifested yet. So, you know, why mm-hmm. do you do that? They're like, well, now we know that it exists so we can tell our defenders like, hey, here's what to expect. So I, I always like to think especially the goal of the AI Red Team is not just to think about what is possible today with, you know, the current state of adversaries, but our goal is to cause these AI systems to fail. And it is by any means necessary. And we keep our gears to the ground thanks to, you know, Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center and uh, Microsoft Threat Action Center. So they are our gears and ground for the internet. So they, you know, they tell us, hey, here's like what, we kind of see in the wild. Um, And we're like, okay, so this is something that we should be like emulating up there. We also want to like push the boundaries a little bit further. So that's how we keep our one foot on the ground, but also try to try to like have attacks that have not yet manifested, Jessica. So kind of like you were saying earlier, it goes back to working with all these other teams too. It's it's not just only the AI red team, but you do need oh, to yeah. bring <laughs> Yeah. We don't want to like ever get into this vacuum of thinking of these highly like futuristic attacks. Then we will like miss the ball for like, you know, the horse is out, out of the barn yet. So we want to keep our feet to the ground. And that's why I'm very, you know, almost, um, very grateful that I have access to these resources because, you know, who can like be the eyes and ears of the internet grounded in threat intelligence um, to kind of levy these sort of attacks. 
Well, Ram, thank you so much. Always good to talk with you. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining. Absolutely, Jessica. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.